The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Sandra Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Daisha Harwood, and Daisha is Executive Director of the Santa Barbara Historical Museum. Thanks for being with us, Daisha. Thanks so much for having me, Cinder. Oh boy, you folks have been around a long time and you do really important work in our community and I can hardly wait to hear all about it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, actually the museum has been in, in existence since 1932. 32, mm -hmm. holy cow. Yep, we've been, we've had a few homes here in town. In fact, oh. actually our first home was at the Old Mission, Santa Barbara. Okay. We then moved into a little adobe in the 1950s on Montecito Street. We had an office for a time at the courthouse and then since the 1960s, we've had our beautiful facility on De La Guerra. On De La downtown Guerra. Santa Barbara. Yeah, and you folks have a lot of events there too, right? Absolutely, we host a lot of our own events, lectures, parties, screenings, you name it, and then we host quite a few rental events as well, so yeah, yeah. weddings and fundraisers right. of other organizations here in town. Yeah, I've seen a lot mm -hmm. of weddings. I have been to them, but I've seen them happening Absolutely. as I drive down the street. They're That's beautiful and important to our income and just also a wonderful way for you know, a young couple to become enamored yeah. in the museum and then care about us as well for the rest of um, their own lives. So yeah. it's, it's a really fun way for, I think, people to start. And it's a beautiful facility. It is, it's gorgeous. The museum itself was actually built there in the 1960s, as I said, because there are two really incredible historic adobes on site. There's the Covarrubias adobe, which mm -hmm. was built in 1817. It's one of the oldest Spanish era homes here in Santa Barbara along with our historic adobe. And so anyway, that's the reason that the wonderful museum facility was built in that location. Can people tour those adobes? They can, yeah. You can ask at, the, at our front desk. Um, and we host quite a few events in our Covarrubias adobe. So smaller lectures and oh. just fun experiences, wine tastings, all sorts of things. So you have exhibits that are, maybe some are permanent and some come and go? That's correct. And then you have lectures, what, what all services do you? Sure, have? so we have a couple of permanent exhibitions. The first is the story of Santa Barbara, which takes our visitor from the, our beginnings as a community with the Chumash um, all the way to the modern day. And it includes things like Santa Barbara's um, obviously indigenous and Spanish, uh, early American period, um, all the way into you may have heard of the Flying A Studios, which was really the first Hollywood here in Santa Barbara um, around 1912, 1915, to the Santa Barbara School of the Arts, which was a wonderful, which really is responsible for the wonderful beginnings of the art community that we have here oh. in Santa Barbara. That was in the 1920s, all the way through old Spanish days and everything in between. So yeah, a wonderful celebration of all things uh, historic and, and, and a good way to find out a real overview of Santa Barbara history. I wonder if the people involved in all the different arts organizations realize that, that they can see the, the exhibit about their sort of beginnings there at the museum. Absolutely, so the Santa Barbara School of the Arts, it was such a wonderful story. And we've held special exhibitions about it as well. Um, people may not know, but actually the Alacama Theater, which is preserved by the Trust for Historic Preservation, is part of the original School of the Arts. So I love to wander downtown and think about, you know, all of those beginnings. Our own Covarrubias adobe was actually used as part of the facility there as well. And there were incredible artists coming out of the Santa Barbara School of the Arts. Um, Ed Boreen, um, many others. Um, we have actually a permanent exhibition dedicated to Boreen. Um, he was a wonderful and well-known Western artist. So, Gosh, yeah. How did you get interested in history like this? 
Great question. I actually went to UCSB and was a history major. Oh, gosh. So, yeah, I'm really lucky to be, you know, not only doing something in my field, but I have the absolute best job in the world. I, it sounds like <laughs> it. Yeah, it sounds like it's perfect for you and for them. It's great. And we are really lucky. We do quite a few seasonal exhibitions as well. Um, and we usually change, you know, three or four times a year. Mm -hmm. So we're wrapping up right now um, an exhibition called Lockwood to Forest, Lighting the Way. And uh, we're also hosting an exhibition of Uget Clark's artwork oh, mm -hmm. right now. And every summer we do an exhibition called Project Fiesta, a history of old Spanish days in collaboration with Old Spanish Days Fiesta, which is a lot of fun, um, and many others. And I should mention that um, even though our exhibitions come and go, they're always filmed and you can experience them later on our website. Really? Have you always done that? You know, we had to really change the way that we were operating during the pandemic, as you might yes. imagine. And so that was, that was really the time that we got most serious about filming everyone. But okay. for the most part, you can experience quite a lot of our collection online. Um, including a lot of the objects uh, that, that live in our vault underneath the museum, you know, various remnants of Santa Barbara's past. We have hundreds of thousands of objects, and you can see quite a few of those online, separate from the exhibitions as well. Gosh. Always that, something to discover, Cinder. Yeah, so that, yeah, <laughs> so that's really a benefit that mm -hmm. came out of such a big challenge with the pandemic. It really was. You know, for us, we host a really popular lecture series at mm -hmm. the museum. Mm -hmm. So one of the first things we did was switch to webinar format, and those have all been preserved and are, are able to be watched online. Um, and now we're doing all of our lectures outdoors, make it, making sure everyone feels comfortable there at the museum, usually with wine in hand. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> it is. And those are actually filmed in conjunction with TVSB, so, which oh. is really wonderful. So they can be watched online or on Channel 17. That is great. So a, a great example of a collaboration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I absolutely. You collaborate with a lot of different organizations. I'm sure hundreds at this point. We're really lucky to have so many great collaborations. In fact, one I believe you know about right now is uh, the Museum's Environmental Alliance. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about your yeah, part in that. Sure. So all of the um, local museums and Botanic Garden and the zoo uh -huh. are collaborating um, this season, this spring, um, to bring really to bring attention to the issue of climate change. Everyone is doing their own uh, their own theme, and we decided to actually do something fun, which is uh, take a hike, save the world, and it focuses <laughs> on our local trails and public lands, and really just inspires you to you know turn off your lights, put down your device, and go and enjoy the outdoors here in beautiful Santa Barbara. Oh, that sounds great! I love the idea that the pandemic, which was such a huge challenge, really brought all the people together, all the different museums together, and that everyone decided to focus on climate change, but they, they're, you're all doing it in a way that is consistent with your mission. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, so absolutely. that's great. So take a hike, save the world. Take a hike, save the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's great. So we have wonderful um, fine art and historic images really illustrating, you know, all that Santa Barbara was in the very beginning and still is now and just inspiring people to go and, and really treasure those wonderful open spaces and opportunities to be outside. But it has been a wonderful collaboration, I have to say. Yeah. And so very meaningful to me to have the support of all of the directors oh. in Santa Barbara during that time. It was a real challenge, as yes. you know. And so just a, a really great experience. I'm so thankful for the collaboration. Well, and more of a challenge for, for most museums I mean, all nonprofits had challenge from that, and, and, and many of them still do. But for the museums, at least most of them, uh, it was even more of a challenge because you had to close your doors. You bet. People we, couldn't be inside. Mm -hmm. We lose our visitors, which obviously is very important. We lose yeah. the ability to host, our, host our own events and our income streams. And you know, for us, our rental events all had to be canceled. I believe we postponed 70 events. 70. Mm -hmm. So we're still making up for last time right now. It's not unusual to see a couple getting married on a Thursday or a nonprofit event being hosted in our beautiful courtyard on a you know, Monday or Tuesday right now. We're just all making yeah. up for lost time, but so, so glad to be back and, yeah. well, and open. Well, good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what events do you have coming up, for example? Sure, so great question. So we've got a lecture coming up this Wednesday, for example, on Santa Barbara's cultural renaissance of the 1920s. Um, mm. We host lectures about once a month at least. Uh, we'll be hosting the exhibition that I spoke of, um, or we'll be hosting the opening, I should say, that I spoke of. 
in June we'll be hosting a uh, talk about um, Old Spanish Days posters and mm. the history of those. Um, we host our annual fundraiser in July. It's called La Fiesta del Museo. Wonderful event with, you know, elegant dinner and live flamenco and um, just under the stars of the museum, really beautiful. Um, and then a full packed schedule of things like guided hikes and lectures and film screenings um, going into the fall. So just the best place to look is on our website. Not unusual for us to have at least one event per week. So take a Gosh, look at that. Gosh, you folks are busy. We are busy. <laughs> it's great though. So, um, and you're a 501c3 we nonprofit. Are. Mm -hmm. So while a person is on your website looking to see what events are coming up and what they can look at uh, virtually, uh, they could look for your Donate Now button and they, make a financial contribution. They absolutely can. Those are always tax deductible. And I should mention that many choose to support us by becoming members of the museum. Membership starts as, yeah. as low as $50 and is incredibly important to not only for our support but to build our historical community. So we really encourage people to join as well. And they can get on the website and you bet. sign join up as a online. member. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, and then you probably have a Facebook page. And we do, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you name it. We do all of that. We've got an active YouTube page, as you might imagine, with all of our lectures that have been filmed in the past. Um, so yes, please do look for us on social media. And uh, we share quite a few of our unseen items, if you will, um, on our social media channels as well. And so that's always fun. Images, yeah. for example, from our research library mm -hmm. um, and artifacts that, that maybe wouldn't make it into an exhibition because it doesn't fit a particular theme. We oh. love to share everything that we have. So from the most unusual to the most incredible pieces of art from Santa Barbara's history. Gosh. So what about volunteers? Do you use volunteers? Yeah, great question. We do. We use volunteers quite a few, or quite a few of them actually at our events. Um, we, we have docent, we have a docent program to okay. give tours, of course, and in our library we have quite, quite a few volunteers that come in and help our, uh, our clients who are researching perhaps their families or their property um, that help in our library as well. So yeah, quite a few opportunities. And so they can find that out on the website as well. They can, they can. Yeah, the best thing is to reach out to us and let us know what you're interested in and, and we'll, we'll help find a good fit. And then you probably provide training. Especially absolutely. for docents, I would imagine. Of course, imagine. yes, absolutely, we do. So, and um, of all ages, actually, as well. We're always looking for bilingual docents, for example. Um, it's just really important the, the, oh, to really sure. illuminate all of the stories of Santa Barbara. We just we love the voices of our volunteers, so it's really important. And did I hear you say that a, a person can visit the museum for free these days? That's correct. Entrance is currently free, and you can actually visit. Um, you can actually feel as though you're visiting, I should say. Uh, we've got a new app where you can actually take a, a virtual tour of the museum itself, um, or you can come in and do a self-guided audio tour as well. During the pandemic, we actually created um, an audio guide, which is really fun, and, and that can be enjoyed either in our galleries or from home. Gosh, that is fascinating. And so I bet you have a story or two you could share with us. <laughs> Great question. So I would just say that, you know, most recently I was walking through our Gledhill Library. It's our wonderful mm -hmm. research library on site. And I overheard the excitement of a family who was seeing photos of their grandparents and, you know, reading about the things that they had done in Santa Barbara. And they just had no idea that we had collected this kind of material. And that's, you know, that's every week for me. There's, there's always something to discover and it's so fun to see people really find the personal connections. If it's to their families or their property or just something that they've seen as they walk down, you know, State Street that they're, they're understanding the deeper meaning of, it's just so much fun. Yeah. So do you work with the schools at all? At we do, we do, education? we do. So we host um, school groups, of course, mm -hmm. in person whenever we can. When the pandemic started, the first thing that we did was actually film all of our docent-led lessons. Oh, and we oh. actually started to, to do a, a Zoom experience with the classrooms. So that's an opportunity as well. In fact, my own third grader actually did the Zoom experience, um, mm. which was, you know, which was actually really fun for them. Um, and they got they actually got to they got to go on a secret tour. They got to see some things that our other guests don't get to do. Um, wow. And it was fun for for our education manager and our docents to interface with the kids. But we love having them in person, you know, the most. That is great. Well, sounds like you folks really pivoted the new word that we're using. <laughs> we did. We've been using for a while. 
pivoted in a really miraculous way. We did. We're really lucky. Our, our new word is hybrid, which yeah. is, you know, that combination of getting everybody back in the door, but also doing what we can to connect with everybody at home. I think that the pandemic in a lot of ways really actually broadened our support base and certainly broadened our audience. Our Zoom talks, which we hosted over 30 of them, have been seen by as many as a thousand people at a time and often oh, in gosh. all areas of the world. So that's been really extraordinary. Yeah, so a person could be anywhere. They don't, you bet. I mean, geography is no longer a barrier. It is not. It is not. And I think there's so many people that Santa Barbara is so special to them. They yeah. grew up here, they visited, they fell in love with our city at some point. And so for you to be anywhere in the world and be able to, to chime in for something like that, it's been a lot of fun. And you could do it in real time or you could watch it later, but we like to do them in real time and then take those real yeah. questions as well sure. at the time. So we've had some wonderful speakers. So it's been a lot of fun. So give me some examples of some of the lectures that you've had. Sure, sure. So uh, one of the most popular was actually about train depots, historic train depots going up the coast. That was by uh, Jean-Guy Dubé, who is a, um, an architect here in town, and he's just extraordinary, has this extraordinary knowledge of all things um, railroad history. Oh. That was tremendously popular. And we hosted a talk about the museum's saddle collection, which was given by oh. Tom Peterson from the Carriage Museum, mm -hmm. another great collaborator, um, along with um, Bill Reynolds, who's actually the museum's president and a well-known expert on all things Western. So anyway, those were two of my recent favorites, but we've hosted you know, every topic you can possibly imagine um, related to Santa Barbara history. Mm -hmm. So it's been a lot of fun. What about exhibits? What have been some of the either most unusual ones or most popular ones. Sure. Well, actually, I would say most recently we had a wonderful exhibition that was curated by Marlena Miller, who is our Edward Boreen collection curator, and it was called um, Edward Boreen and His Circle of Friends, and it included some absolutely incredible artwork from people like Charlie Russell uh, and just really brought it all home, the amazing circle that this particular artist had here, not only in Santa Barbara, but around the country. Mm. So, and then uh, very recently we opened up our exhibition, which is you get Marcel Clark, a portrait of the artist. Mm -hmm. That has been tremendously popular and our guests yeah. have really had fun realizing not, that not only was this woman very intriguing, but she was a really an incredible and talented artist and more involved in Santa Barbara than you might expect. Oh. We actually found during our own research that you get uh, not only did she spend time right next to the museum at Meridian Studios, but she also participated in an art show at the Faulkner Gallery, for example, uh, wow. right after she uh, hosted an exhibition in Paris. So just kind of fun, those little discoveries to find out just how involved someone, you know, was when you didn't really, when you just go into it not really realizing that. So yeah. anyway. Golly. Yeah. So do you think that most communities have such a, a well-developed, uh, historical museum as we have here in Santa Barbara. You know, I don't know how to compare that to other places, but it's always fun to, you know, visit visit other areas and really see some of those things. I will say that, um, you know, we have things like every brochure from 98 years of Fiesta history, and I recently oh. was at a museum in Spain and actually saw one of the brochures including um, some performers from the 1960s about our fiesta. So I think it's always fun to see those connections um, across the world. You know, Santa Barbara is certainly an internationally known city. Yeah. And so um, it's a good question. Gosh. Okay, so we have a couple minutes left. What else would you like our audience to know about the Santa Barbara Historical Museum? I think they should just come and visit. You know, we're two blocks from State Street in downtown. Mm -hmm. Very accessible. We're open on uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays right now. And we're actually open later on Thursday nights, so that's kind of fun. Oh, that's good. Um, so if you're out on any Thursday, you can come until 7. If you're out for first Thursday, it's a great stop. And, you know, the best thing to do is check our website for upcoming events, not only the programming events that the museum hosts, but we like to share other community events that are happening there as well. Oh, that's and good. We just like to be a really active participant in not only in our city, but in downtown. And we can always use the support of the community, either by becoming a member or making a donation or just thinking of us for your next gathering. That is great. All right. And they can go, once again, on the website and find out all about how to do that. Absolutely. Right there on, at sbhistorical.org. Yeah. Oh, Daisha, thank you so You're much so for this important work. 
that you're doing in our community. I hope a lot more people come and visit. Thank you, thank you. We feel very busy lately, so it's been great. So please do come and visit and come and check out what we're doing and try to come every few months so you don't miss anything. Oh, that's a good idea. So you don't miss one of those new exhibits. Absolutely. Or a lecture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And thanks for being on our show to share your wonderful story with us. Thank you so much for having me. We really appreciate it. And thanks for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time.